Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP's abusive boyfriend tries to microwave her dog. Our next Reddit post is actually a news article. David Holliday was working at Pachanga Resort and Casino as a spa concierge on Tuesday when he encountered a difficult and demanding customer. Holliday told us that the customer demanded service ahead of other guests. Just from the offset, he seemed a bit different from the usual guests we have in the spa, he told us. He was also put off to learn that the customer was paying in all cash. Holiday had a gut feeling that he had seen this customer somewhere before, so he googled his name. The search resulted in multiple stories about the customer and his alleged ticket scam, and that's when Holiday realized that he had seen this guy on the local news. Holiday informed security at the casino, and they alerted the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, who arrested the customer at the scene. Man! Okay, so if you're committing multiple felonies, scamming people out of their money, and you're trying to launder the money by getting rid of it and, you know, spending the cash so you don't get caught with it, maybe don't act like a Karen to customer service people and piss them off because you might just end up in jail. What a doofus, man! Our next Reddit post is from Underhill. Our mailman had a mailbox at the end of our street where he would pick up the mail at the end of his route and take it back to the post office. One day, some smartass kid started spin-kicking the mailbox to knock it over and show off what he learned in karate. This went on for a bit, until the kid's parents were told, and even his karate teacher. The kid was grounded and got kicked out of karate class. Unfortunately, a week after the kid's grounding, out of spite or pride or whatever, he went back to kicking it over whenever he could. This continues for another month, until one day, the smartass kid again does his roundhouse kick into the mailbox, but it doesn't budge. The mailbox stood rock solid, causing the kid's leg to fracture, and he ended up having to wear a cast for the rest of the summer. Turns out, some anonymous neighbor decided to mail a bunch of sandbags with no return address the night before. The mom of the smartass kid tried to blame the post office and threatened to sue, but since the sandbags had stamps and even an address, to Santa, they were considered legally mail and not maliciously placed into the mailbox. Oh man, sounds like Santa Claus has upgraded from giving naughty kids coal to giving naughty kids broken legs. Our next Reddit post is from Don't Give Up The Shoe. My best friend was married for 10 years and with his ex for a total of 13 years. He was absolutely head over heels in love with her like I'd never seen before, which I never understood due to her alcohol abuse. She would take it out on him, and when he'd be venting about it, he'd always fall back on, it's not her, it's the illness, which was a very respectable and admirable stance on it. Last year, she asked for a divorce because after years of her abusing him, he had simply run out of gas. Her reason for asking for one? When she got fired for testing positive for weed, he wasn't empathetic enough. He admits that he wasn't very empathetic because that had come on the back of one of her drunken tirades where she had told him that he was a piece of garbage who was always trying to control her. When, in reality, all he ever really tried to do was get her to stop drinking so much. It took him forever to move on from this, with the divorce following shortly after. And earlier this year, after thinking that he was moving on, he calls me to come over because he's in a bad way. I arrive, and he's absolutely falling down levels of drunk. I found out that the real reason why she had asked for a divorce was because she had been cheating with several other people. The next morning, when he's more coherent, I ask him how he knew. He said that he was cleaning out the spare room and selling and donating stuff that he didn't need anymore, and when he went to clear out an old tablet, she was still logged in and all the evidence was there. He gets out the tablet, says that he's going back to bed, and asks me to lock up when I leave. Before I left, I looked at the tablet, and after seeing what I saw, I wanted to find a way to get even with that horrible and conniving woman, so I took pictures of everything and left. When I got home, I started looking up information about these people. Two of them were just normal guys. Whether they knew that she was married or not, I don't know. But the third? Well, the third comes up as a registered sex offender. He was still on probation for being a disgusting pile of garbage, his address was listed, and he knew that she was married. I immediately knew what I was going to do. Even though his home address was listed, I knew that he wasn't living there because he was living with my friend's conniving ex. 
she made regular posts about their time together. On top of that, she's an avid w user and has several firearms because she enjoys sport shooting. So, I go to my state's offender website and make a report of this guy not actually living where he's registered and that he's living in a home with and guns, which he has no right to do since he's a convicted felon on parole. I include screenshots of the social media post to back it up. I was thinking that not much would happen except an inconvenience for their lives, but boy was I wrong. She broke her trend of typical worthless posts on social media with this gem. My ear can't get any worse. My boyfriend lost his job and I'm now facing eviction because I can't afford my rent. So I go to the state court system to see if it's related. And yes, it was. Her boyfriend was rearrested. My buddy's ex clearly can't afford to post bail or he'd be out already. The job that she took after being fired definitely can't afford her lifestyle. So, he's probably going back to prison, or at least jail, and she's a breath away from being homeless. I don't know if I'd ever tell my best friend that I was the one behind this. But he is definitely ecstatic to see a horrible woman and a sewer rat get what they deserve. Part of me wants to tell my friend about what I did, but I don't want to make my best friend's life harder, so I'll just let sleeping dogs lie. OP, the best part of this revenge is that you didn't really go out of your way to be evil or to like, you know, concoct some brilliant evil scheme to get revenge. All you did was just show them the consequences of their actions. You know, this guy was breaking his parole, so you simply told the authorities that he was breaking the law. The only reason why this revenge was successful was because they're such terrible people that they set themselves up for revenge. So anyways, OP, this is good revenge from a good friend. Our next Reddit post is from May Your R Word Burn. I was in a relationship for maybe two years from 2009 to 2011 with a man that I'd known online since approximately 2002. We'd met in person a few times when he happened to be in the same city, but hadn't really been involved consistently in each other's offline worlds until I moved to his city to be together and share an apartment with him. I now realize this is a very flawed approach to a relationship, but this was my first serious relationship. It took about three days to figure out that he didn't actually have a job and that his mom co-signed on his apartment, paid all of his bills, and gave him money for groceries about once a week. Soon after, I learned that his mom expected me to pay her six full months of rent and rather hefty deposits on utilities because he told her that I had quite a bit of savings. I suggested that we put the utilities in my name, and I said that I had already spoken to the leasing office about me doing so. His mom lost her mind at that suggestion, and said that I had gone behind their backs and was sneaking around trying to control everything. She called me a cheap whore in front of my ex, and then said, Are you like this because your mother m me? Which, to be fair, my mom did m me. I just wasn't expecting her to know about that, or to throw it in my face. I wasn't expecting any of this. Naturally, since I was in my early 20s, I told myself that the problem was his mother, because I was certain that I truly knew him, and that he was a good person, and what really mattered was that we were deeply in love. The first year went by, and things got worse. He hit me, called Mommy Dearest about it, and she came over to let me know that she raised him to not hit a lady, but I was no lady. I fell through a rotten staircase behind our apartment complex and I was injured. There was a lawsuit, but it was going to take some time and I could no longer work overtime every week. I could only afford our bills and rent and basics. He started taking my painkillers which I had for my back. They'd all be gone in a week. It was an unnecessarily painful recovery. I couldn't afford to buy him weed and cigarettes anymore, so he stayed at his mom's most of the time because then he could take money from her purse for stuff. So I was alone a lot. I was isolated. Some of his friends messaged me on Facebook telling me to dump him because he said awful things about me to them, but of course, I didn't believe them. I decided to temporarily stay back in my hometown until the lawsuit was settled, because our lease was up anyways, and it was like my boyfriend had grown to dislike me, but wouldn't say it. Shortly thereafter, I was awarded a decent settlement, and both he and his mother suddenly wanted back in my life. 
I was naively overjoyed that he seemed to care about me again, and I said that he could come stay in the house that I was renting from my dad in my hometown if he wanted. In the meantime, I had adopted a rescue dog, a small mutt. I thought things were coming together, but obviously they weren't. The good times didn't last long. I bought our food, but I told my boyfriend that he needed to get a job if he wanted money for weed or video games or whatever. He pretty much instantly went back to hating me and would barely speak to me. I was devastated. He confronted me one night and basically told me that he needed money to buy Percocet, but I said no. And I don't know how else to put it, but he climbed on top of me. Oh geez, I can't read the rest of the sentence. People of the internet, you're going to have to guess what the rest of that sentence means and why I can't say it, because I definitely can't say that on YouTube. Then, he acted like that was the thing that I wanted him to do in order for me to give him drug money. There, I showed you the attention you so desperately wanted. Give me money. When I told him what he did to me, I was sobbing and he flipped out and tried to shove my dog in the microwave? Like, as revenge for me calling what he did, what he did. I then forgot anything else, grabbed a broom, and started jabbing him in the stomach with the handle and chased him out of my house. Our car that I paid for was in his name, so I threw him his keys and screamed at him to leave. He drove off to his mom's house. My family had been so good to him that he thought that he could call my dad the next day and demand that I be removed from the house so that he could collect his stuff. My dad basically told him to go F himself. We sold or donated his stuff. A year later, I decided to get my laptop repaired. He had smashed the screen during an argument. I learned that I had all of his passwords saved on it in Firefox. I felt sick and curious. I eventually read his chats on Facebook and Gmail chat, going all the way back to the time period when we were together. During our relationship, he had told multiple people that I was autistic so he couldn't dump me but he could date other people. He said a lot of cruel things about me. I found a saved document, an essay he'd written for some writing group that he was a part of called Revenge S with a girl who had rejected him 10 years earlier in high school. I remember this situation. He'd met up with her for about an hour while she was in our city. There was no revenge intercourse. I know because she invited me too. I decided to send this girl a copy of the essay. I decided I should also devastate his life because he devastated mine. I was in a dark place. I'm not proud of what I did, but I think it's suitable to share here. I first perused Craigslist for dicks. I needed to find a picture with no face but a body that convincingly matched his. And I did, and the best part was the dick was super flaccid and unimpressive. I decided that I would change all of his passwords late at night and then send every woman on his Facebook that picture, and then quickly claim to have been hacked, but then continue to say weird things to these women. I even made a status saying that my real friends would believe me that I didn't send that picture. Again, I continued to flirt with these women. I made it clear the hacking was a BS excuse so that later people wouldn't believe him. I sent his high school crush a copy of the essay. I wreaked havoc on his life for a few days before he eventually got his accounts back. I found out months later from one of his acquaintances that he lost his job. He was kicked out of the improv theater where he was training, he was kicked out of his writing group, and he lost most of his friends over the situation. His mom got mad at him and blamed him for all of this, then stopped paying his rent so he had to move in with her. As it turns out, he's lived with her ever since. He showed up at my job a couple of years ago, but he wouldn't make eye contact with me when I said, Oh, hey, I saw your parents earlier. I wondered if they had let you tag along. He's allegedly become a total shut-in. He doesn't work or interact with anyone except his parents, and very rarely his friends. I don't know how much of this is my fault, and while it's not something I'm proud of, it's certainly not something I'm ashamed of either. Except, I do feel bad about the women on the receiving end of the d pics, a bit. OP, with scum like this guy, it is impossible for revenge to go too far. He had this coming to him, and I'm glad that you ruined whatever pathetic life he had going for him. He's gonna have a lot harder time ruining another woman's life, or another dog's life for that matter, now that he's jobless, friendless, and living with his mommy. 
That was r slash pro revenge. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.